Time formats in chess are quite a controversial topic. Many, such as the ex-world champion Magnus Carlsen, believe that faster time controls are more representative of a chess player's ability to be able to think under time pressure, and therefore he prefers blitz and rapid styles of chess. Other chess players will prefer classical games going on for hours and hours and hours because it's the purest form of chess and they claim is the most accurate and therefore because it's the most perfect because players have longer to consider their moves it is the better type of chess. Now I don't know exactly where I stand on this however I typically play either extreme. I normally play blitz or bullet so I'll have like three minutes or less and my opponent will have three minutes or less or I'll play classical where I have like an hour and a half and my opponent also does not including increment so games go typically on for at least two and a half hours so a nice in between is rapid and in today's video we're going to be starting a new series on the channel where I noticed my rapid rating on chess.com is quite low compared to what it should be so I thought I should be trying to push that up to at least 2000 DLO and what better way to do it than live with you guys so this marks episode 1 of the rapid rating climb part 2 I suppose because I have actually done one before on lead chess starting from far lower but this will be a bit of higher quality because it's higher elo. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into the game. My opponent is rated 1650. No, I'm rated 1650. My opponent's rated 1500. I did not know my rapid rating was this low, but we're going to see how high I can get it during this series. We have the main Vienna Gambit expecting this and we're gonna play the modern main line with Queen F3. The point is we're just threatening to win a pawn. And then after knight takes we play B takes C3. B takes C3 objectively is maybe a little bit better. But most people will play knight C6, which is just genuinely a blunder. Like genuinely you might question how on earth can developing a knight to the center be a blunder. It really is, because then I get this. Where is that knight going? It has no forward movement. The knight really wants to go to d7 to try and prepare an f6 break. I only know that because I play this opening all the time. And again, like I said, most people will take with the D pawn on C3. Okay. Okay, my opponent knows some theory. Because Queen H4 forces a Queen trade. There we go. But. Bishop G2. Bishop c4 is kind of tempting. I don't need to chase this pawn. Like, this pawn is going to fall at some point. Bishop g4 looks here. Yes. What if? What if I do this? This doesn't work because I win it. And I'm threatening the pawn. Technically, I'm also threatening to take the knight and double isolate my opponent's pawns. But I don't really want to take the knight, because like I mentioned before, the knight is kind of useless. It can't go anywhere. Like, it's just a bad piece. So I don't really want to take it anyway. So... <coughs> it's quite a nice position. It's very nice, in fact. Really, if you wanted to trade the queens, he should have done it earlier. Because if he did it, if, 
forehand in this position, then I wouldn't be able to play d4 because of en passant. Whereas the way my opponent did it, allowing me to get d4 in first, allowed me to get this structure. And here I just win the pawn. Whoa. Tricky, tricky. Tricky. Wow. So the point is, I think, there, there, I'm going to take it. And he's trying to set this up? Or this up? Admirable. I think this solves all my problems though. I wanted to play this at first, but then bishop b4, and I don't have bishop b2. But if I go here, bishop b4, bishop d2, and my bishop blocks the rook's attack. So this should just be winning. I should just have a piece up. Well, a piece for a pawn, but like, you know, it's a pawn, who cares? That seems very unnecessary from my opponent. Yeah, but what about this? This, after the trade, this doesn't come in time. If the pawn started on c5, it would be viable. Okay. That pawn doesn't really matter. Let's go here. I'd love to see him take. Even though this comes with check, I can tuck my king... Yep. I can tuck my king on f3. I like that square. Looks like it's in the open, but the bishop blocks checks, and there's no checks along the third rank, so my king is very safe here. Control some important squares. That doesn't look good. That's just a target for my bishop. I think he played it to stop me from taking on h7, but I was never going to take on h7. The bishop's useful because it stops the rook from going to d2. Also famous Bobby Fischer thing, if I take here, g6 traps my bishop. Okay, what about this, this, this? My opponent has no threats. Yep. I could double up. Could double up. Yeah, you know what, the pawns aren't going anywhere. Let's double the rooks. I think that's um, a bit more of a clinical way of going about this. Because why leave a rook on e1? Let's bring everyone to the party, right? That's how chess should be played. Trying to utilize every piece to their fullest potential. So, we're going to adhere to that. This isn't scary, this isn't scary. So we're gonna check. I actually I wanna check him again. I think I wanna check him again. Check. <laughs> because if he goes back, I'd I'd rather keep him on the back rank. Check. Take. Here I'm just gonna push. Keep it simple. Here. Let's attack the rook. Ask him what he's doing there. Because this is well protected. This pawn is still weak. And his king is very close to getting mated. That's why I wanted to give him a check when he advanced here. Now, 
I expected him to go there and then after check he could bring the rook back but then I just get a trade so who's the real winner also then go and win this pawn so yeah maybe it didn't really matter which way he went let's here 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 annoyingly he can kind of defend himself kind of can You know what I like? I like c4. Rook a2. King d4. And then I'm expecting rook here. Rook g6. And mate. Because this is covered. And this is covered. That's the plan. If that happens, I am the go. So this this, this, this. Do it. Do it. Now if he's smart, he might go here. And then if I go rook g6, rook e5. Okay. I didn't consider that, honestly. But it doesn't matter. Here he can run. Check there. Why is he making this difficult? Let's go here. Let's go here. And he can't play rook d2 to pin the bishop because this is mate. So that's nice. Probably has to move the king either way. If I made this more difficult than it needs to be, maybe that would be something I would do. Check. King here, check. I want to do this. Odds on. That's mate. Let's let's do it. Rook d2 check. King c3. I don't think he can get out of it if he does that. A5 stops, mate. Or does it? Because then bishop to e4. And here, that's mate. Here, it's also mate. Smart move. Check there. Why is he finding all the good moves, man? What's going on? Expecting this. Then I have this. So my idea is Bishop c8 check, king a5, rook takes a7. He does escape, but it forces him into the open. That's the idea. I'm really struggling to mate him here. I feel like I've missed something very obvious. But he... He's going well. Going well, playing well even. 
he's playing well. He's rated 1525. You guys can't actually see that. I don't know why it doesn't show up like here. Really should. Maybe you guys can see that though. Maybe you, I, th I hope you can see that. Just to prove I'm not lying. Whoa. Okay. He believes I'm going to mate him. Well, that's flattering because I wasn't convinced I was going to mate you. Let's just play simply. Let's just win the pawn and push. Let's not do anything stupid. He has an A-pawn. does have an A-pawn. I think I can just play King C3 though. A4. Rook F1. Actually, no, A4, King B4. What am I even saying? I can just go get it. With the big dog himself, the king. Yeah, the, the, the king covers this. And then these pawns will struggle to move. Let's attack the rook. A4, king takes A2. he's still playing on. I mean, he's just down a row. Just stop any side checks. Stop being annoying, man. Stop it. I want to be able to move this rook, but then this would fall, so I'm just going to defend it with this rook. Doesn't look pretty. But my rook does everything it needs to. I'm going to look at going in behind. Picking up the pawn like that. Here, here. Doesn't really work. Now he can win this pawn, but he's going to have to give up his rook for it. And then... He has nothing. This doesn't do anything. This also doesn't do anything. Could go here if he wants. Are you going to try and give me a perpetual? Here I have this. And I force the rook trade. I lose the pawn, but I don't care. Let's just push. Why am I even thinking, man? It looks scary. It really isn't. It really isn't because the rook's going to cut the king off. This comes with check. Check. And check. Check. Why does he keep making this difficult? Stop the king from running this way. Check. And mate. There we go game. I think that was pretty flawless, to be honest. Like, I don't think we did anything wrong. It was, um, pretty comfortable. 
opponent plays some good moves, but he kind of lets me get this very nice pawn center. There's no way for him to really defend this pawn. F5, take. I'm going to win this. Yeah, knight takes d4 was just bad. It was a nice idea in theory, but it just gave me a piece. I'm happy with the doubling on the e-file. Force the king back. We tried to mate him. I'm trying to see if I actually did have a mate. But yeah, he just gave the rook up. And then... Easy conversion. Trade the rooks. Push the pawn. Don't get mated by the pawn somehow. And then, yeah. King a2 is a nice way to finish it off. Just covering this king's escape so that queen a8 would be mate. But this is also mate. So, yeah. Let's see how high I can get my rapid rating in future episodes. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one.